you decided to leave Twitch and you go to Mixer. Talk me through that. I wanted Mixer to succeed. I did not go just for the bag. Mixer went under and it's because they sucked, dude. And what I mean by they <laughs> suck is they didn't, they didn't listen, dude. The most subs I've ever had at one time, I think was like 267,000. So $917,000. A month. You're like, baby, you wanna buy dude, this house right here? You, you wanna buy this house right here? Which house you wanna buy, happened, honey? bro. <laughs> that, like 10,000 viewers on Twitch, 5,000, 6,000 on YouTube, 4,000 on TikTok. I'm pulling 20K. But like what I used to pull, like 100K, 90K, 80K. <laughs> to go from that to this, I've already had to like check my ego millions of times to not end my own life. I'm not even joking. Like, dude, the <laughs> shit, uh, bro, to put it, like, to put it lightly. Oh, it's 15 time world champion, Demetrius Johnson. You're listening to the Body Cast. What's going on, boys? Welcome to another episode of the Mighty Cast. And our next guest is a superstar on the online world on Twitch. I follow this crew for a very, very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Tyler, aka Ninja Belvins. How you doing, brother? What's up, bro? Good to see you, man. Good to see you too, man. It's been a long time. Oh, it's been a long time <laughs> since we I know, right? It's been a long time since we've seen each other in person. How yeah, is yeah. life? Uh, dude, it's good, man. It's good. Um, just getting ready, just doing a lot of cleaning around the house right now. My wife and I just getting ready. We're about to go back to Illinois, uh, where like my the rest of my family lives. Okay. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna chill there at our other house for like a couple months and just, you know, spend some time with the gang. It's also just really hot here. So we're just trying to get a break from it all. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now I'm gonna jump right off the, jump right off it. You got a tattoo, you got a sleeve. Oh, yeah. Of Legend of La Gaia. L let's talk about Legend of La Gaia. I mean, it's beautiful. Oh, no, I, I, I saw it. Legend of La Gaia. A lot of people don't know about this game. It was probably one of the best games that came on PlayStation 1. It was an RPG where if you want to do a combination, it was like up, down, up, down. Then you do a critical art or a superior art or whatever it may be. One, oh, yeah. what, I mean, what about the game? that you love. Like I love just the yeah, storyline, yeah. the, 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 the combat system. I oh, never yeah. beat it. I never beat it. We'll, we'll talk about that. Why I never beat it, but it's tell fine, me about the, the, the love of the game that you have for it. Dude. So I, I literally was asked this on my stream like a couple days ago and I, it was the very first like storyline driven game, right. That wasn't mm -hmm. like, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or some yep. crap um that i played growing up that like i was like you know heavily invested in it and i think what drew me to it and this is what draws me to a lot of games um are like like the darker the storyline right like the deeper and darker the storyline i think like the better just like the more feelings i feel like you get out of it right yep. and um it, it it pulls that out of you and like that's what this game was about right i mean you're seeing like dude if this game was redone in like gra like nowadays graphics <laughs> Dude, like, bro, humans are being possessed by monsters, right? By the Suru. And the only way, like, in the mist, right? And for those of you who don't know, mist, basically the mist is covering, you know, the whole world. Yep. Um, you don't know why. And no spoilers. The mist is covering the whole world. Uh, if you are if you don't have a raw Suru, which is, like, uh, what, you know, I have, like, they have on their arms. This is mm -hmm. Vaughn. He's the main character. Yep. And then Gala's got his right here. If you don't have a raw Suru, you enter the mist. You'll, a, a monster can possess you. Mm -hmm. So like that's dark, bro. Like that's some dark stuff right there. And then and, and, you know, there's also you know one of the main characters, Noah, who I'm gonna have her like right here, I think. Um, she, you know, her parents end up being like, you know, I also I, I don't want to spoil it, I guess, too much. But like, dude, it's it's dark. It's a dark storyline. And then the combat system uh, was one of the most unique combat systems I've ever had. It was right up there with Legend of Dragoon, where like you're yep. timing the buttons um, to make the combo go better. Which, by the way. Like those, those weren't easy to do. No, like you can no. easily miss those combos, and yeah, Legend of the Gaia, dude. Like you, you know, up, down, left. Like I, I still remember almost every single move, dude. Like, <laughs> like, like temp, dude. Tempest break for Noah, which is one of her yep. best moves. It's a six. It's a six combo move. It's right, right, left, up, up, up. Um, you know, she's got rushing Gale, which is up, up, left, down, right. Like you know, and then you have their hyper arts, which by the way. Like you, you could miss their hyper arts. Yep. Like you, you know, besides you, when you, you win them from a boss, like there were ch treasure chests that had their first hyper arts. Um, so the game was just so cool, man. Like there was, like one of my favorite things about any game, of course, is like hidden treasure, right? Um, you find a hidden treasure, it, you're you're freaking out. It's, it's always exciting. And dude, there was like no sign of like sometimes you, you like you would just have to like run across like walls or like bushes and forests and just spam mm -hmm. the x button and you'll find like a super rare item 
um, that you would normally never find before. And it, it, it's like an actual game changing item. And I think like Elden Ring does a really good job of that too. Like, dude, there's items, armor, weapons everywhere, bro. Like obviously the, the world is one of the biggest, probably one of the biggest worlds I've ever seen in terms of like an open world, uh, like, you know, discovery game. And like, there's a, it can change your completely make the game easy right you know what i mean like and i feel like that's just missed bro like those games like this just missed it doesn't exist anymore like it, even final fantasy 16 one of my favorite games of this year uh or came out last year like it's a very you know i feel like a lot of games are like this where it's just like you're at your first town you buy this item you have buy this armor you go to the next town you have an upgrade of armor you go to the next town from the way you have, dude, love the kid, man. Um, Yo, you, they, go, <laughs> dude, you go to the next, you go to the next town, next upgrade of armor, right? Yep. But like, you don't find in some crazy dungeon or you know, in the open world, a secret area that has a legitimate like weapon that could change, like change the game. And I feel like that that, that was one of the things that Legend of the Guy had, and you know, I love it. Yeah, Literally. I agree with you, dude. I agree with you. Like, I feel like games like that, Legend of the Gaia, uh, Legend of Dragoon, I totally forgot about that game. I remember playing that. And yeah, then, ha like, I feel like Legend of Gaia had multiple discs, disc, right? Like, I, it, so I don't... It was... A, so, dude, this is going to blow your mind. It was one disc. Was but, it? But, oh, but, my dude, God. But, but, but it had... It came in the case. Yep. Well, I, I have it. At, I, I only have it at my Illinois house. It came in the case that looked like it had four discs. Yeah, I don't that's know. That's why, why I feel like it, it, it was like a thick case where it Dude. had four, but you're telling me it only had one. It's been one so game. long since Bro, I no, played no. that game. No, first off, every other game that has that much content, dude, it has like 24 oh. hours of content. Like you cannot rush through this game, right? Like yeah. if you're, it's so the fact that they were able to fit all this content on one disc when like, you know, I can play, you know, you play Final Fantasy S seven, seven has three, it's nine has yep. four discs, and it's like, dude, this has almost as much content as that on one disc. It's yeah, the game, it's a miracle. That, that game was amazing. I remember playing it when I was a kid and, you know, the mist would come and you would do the combinations and we, I Clean. never beat the game. I got to the final boss. Like I was not a fan of grinding, Like right? It's like, okay, yeah. like you said, you get to a boss and it's like, oh, I'm not strong enough. I have to go down and go farm for like two hours and the game then go back and fight. Yeah, it was unforgiving, but I'm Dude. like, I'm not going to do that. If I go through the whole storyline, beat every single boss, by the time I get to the boss, I should be able to kill him. But I couldn't beat him. And I was like, you know what? I'm mm -hmm. done. So I think now being 37, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play the game again. I hope they remake it. It's just so hard oh. to, you know, I don't have a PC. I PlayStation One. It's yeah. not a PS Five. It's you. Nope. I mean, you you can download an emulator on your your computer, Which but I, I hate want emulators. like I I'm I right with I you. I don't trust them, dude. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I just want one where it's like, hey, we're gonna remake it, uh, and Square Enix is gonna remake it like they like they made Final Fantasy Seven. I wish, bro. Why not just remake it and just say for the true lovers out there, for the true gamers, here's this Legend of the Gaia. Yeah. Enjoy, dude. I think that the dude. I've actually. This is years ago uh, when I was when I was with Loaded when Loaded was my uh, my agency that was representing me for deals and stuff like that. I remember I went to them and I was like, and this is when I was like peak ninja. We're talking like hundred thousand <laughs> viewers. Peak I say ninja. peak ninja because I mean like bro, they just want to have like the most poll, right? Hundred thousand viewers, no. uh, ten million views of video on YouTube. Like it was crazy. I went to them and I was like, guys, listen, because um, I, I you know I started getting connections and like you know I was I was like, all right, well if I have connections and people are like I have my my voices everywhere, like I want to like reach out and yep. try to find out who owns the rights to this game. And I'm ninety nine percent sure, maybe like eighty percent, that the the company that created Legend of the Guy or has the rights of it, like just disbanded. So like oh. they're so I, I, so no one can no one can remake it. That's why it's not on the the side it's not on the PlayStation Network, right? Because no, they can't get the rights to to put it on the PlayStation Network yep. to download because no one no one has the rights to it anymore. So I don't know if that means that someone can do it anyways and remake yeah. it, or like will they get sued? Um, I have no clue. But unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever I don't think we'll ever see it, dude, unless someone just like fronts it. What's going on, guys? This podcast is sponsored by Turtle Beach. Now, Turtle Beach is the number one gaming headset on the market today. I use it for when I'm filming the Mighty Cast, and I also use it when I'm in the studio playing video games. These right here are the Gen 3 Stealth 600. It is Bluetooth enabled. It has a cool USB. You can plug it into your Xbox 360 or Xbox One or your computer. Now, the cool things I love about this is that it has 80 hours of battery life. Also has super human hearing. Do yourself a favor, go to turtlepeach.com and make sure you pick up your brand new Stealth 600 Turtle Beach headset and use my promo code Mighty. That'll save you 10% on your order. Take your gaming to the next level. Have the best 
headset that's going to give you the best noise so you can tell who's creeping around the corner to try to take you out in the next game that you are playing. As always, shout out to Turtle Beach for sponsoring this podcast. Let's get back to Ninja. We don't want to keep him waiting. What's going on, guys? This video is sponsored by G Fuel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we all know G Fuel has amazing flavors for the energy formula. We're getting your caffeine along with the multivitamin. But now, G Fuel has come out our brand new product. Boom! G Fuel Energy Plus Protein. Caffeine and protein. You're going to get 15 grams of whey protein along with 140 milligrams of caffeine. It's a perfect combination to take before you go to the gym. I enjoy taking protein and caffeine before I go to the gym. Caffeine is a great energy source. It's natural. And along with the protein, it's going to help supplement your muscles and replenish the muscles and when you break them down. So if you want to give G Fuel the brand new Energy Plus Protein a try, all you got to do is go to gfuel.com. And when you do that, make sure you use my promo code MIGHTY. That'll help you save 20% on your complete order. They have some delicious flavor. They got cafe mocha, French vanilla latte, and they also have chocolate. If you guys are out there and you love your caffeine and you love your damn coffee, look no further. Get the Energy Plus Protein G Fuel. Brand new product. Don't wait. Go to gfuel.com. Promo code MUDDY. Back to the content. It's like front of the bill. I know, dude. That breaks my heart, man, because that's the thing. Like, there's so many great games like Chrono Trigger. I would love a remake of that. Like, it it, it was an amazing game. The music, the soundtrack. Like, I still listen to it to this day when I'm I'm lifting out, when I'm doing core. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to listen to, you know, a little Chrono Trigger. Just just, just listen to that. But the soundtrack, the games, the storytelling back in the day, like Devil May Cry, I mean, the list just goes on. was so much better than today's gaming. Like, now, and I want to get your piece on this. I feel like now, when it comes to gaming, every studio is focused on is this a good streaming game right it's like you know hey here's your game you buy the game you get 10 hours and then the next dlc or the next expansion you get the other 10 and you get another 10 we're back in the day you play devil may cry and it was like 15 hours of fun and that was it dante's like all right we're out of here boom and it's like thanks for playing that was it and everybody loved it Everybody was yeah. like, that was an amazing game. Now you p- play a game like the the Descendant just came out. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, this game is horrible. Da, 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 da. It's like, what happened just to appreciate the 15 hours you fucking got? Now yeah. it's like, you make spoiled. a game. It, yeah, we're spoiled. We're Talk to me about like, spoiled. What, what your thoughts. Because you play way more games than I do because you're mm-hmm. always streaming games. So so I will say, I, honestly, that's a great that's a great question. It's also a very good like um, like assessment of of gaming nowadays. I feel like... I feel like streamers complain about it more than maybe casuals um, because streamers have, it's their job, right? So they literally, you know, they get the game and they play it in 20, you know, for 20 hour streams and like, and then they're done with it. But like, so there are games that's, that do, that they'll still do exist like that. Like Chrono Trigger, like your OG game, 15 hours, yep. like Sea of Stars, in my opinion, it's a, um, it's like a $20 game on Steam. It's one of the best games I've ever played and a very really? original. Oh yeah. I'm not joking. Huh. Um, literally give it, give it a try. It is uh kind of like legend of dragon with a combat style a little bit where like you have to you can like progress a move by like mm-hmm. by like hitting a hitting a combo and hitting a timer yep. but um dude it's a great storyline uh original game i think i beat it in like 20 hours maybe a little bit more maybe a little less like great exploration and um so there are companies that are making games like that but it's just so few and far between right mm-hmm. i think that a lot of companies nowadays especially when they're you know you're triple a they're sitting here like all right great we want to make the money when you buy the game for 60 bucks like cod but like we're trying to make money right yeah we're trying we're talking about obviously downloadable content but we're talking you know skins etc things like that the microtransaction the The microtransaction i mean you 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 buy the season pass and it's like oh 20 bucks season pass and then if you get three months here's another one yeah Yeah. three months if you and this one thing i'll say about fortnite is that if you buy the season pass and you play through the whole entire season you get your money back and it gives you the opportunity to buy yeah. the next season pass. But then every once a blue moon, they might be like, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? If you missed the first ninja skin, yep, it's here, back. It's back, dude. Let's let's get it. And then but it's the like, game oh, is free fuck. to play though. That's the thing, yeah. dude. Like the number one thing about microtransactions, and I will always say this, dude. Um, like make the game free to play. Yep. And and then I don't care. Like League of Legends and Valorant, like, so so you you, you still need to pay, it's very low to buy a new agent. I think it's like four bucks. 
if you want to yeah. play a new agent. But also, I'm pretty sure that you can earn enough experience by playing to unlock the agent for free. So I think, mm-hmm. that the, and there's a way to do that in both League of Legends and Valorant. Um, but yeah, man, like Fortnite is like the per- Fortnite is the perfect example of it is not a pay to play game. It is free to play, and you don't need to buy skins. You don't need to spend money. Yeah, like, you speak. You you, you be the uh, what they call them, the casuals, where you just yeah. run with the, the basic yeah. one. The no skins, That's, right? The tifus, yes. dude. Yes, um, yes. Dude, like that's totally fine. And then like, but put in good enough content or good enough skins where people will want to spend money. And like, and then it's like, great. There's no, in my opinion, when I look at like, when I look at it like that, I don't think it's like, it doesn't, it just doesn't seem sellouty. Yeah, It doesn't I seem agree. sellouty because it's free to play the game. It's not pay to win. And that's another thing, right? You don't pay to win. Um, so you just pay to look, combo, dude. Yeah, you, you, you pay, pay to look sick, dude. Yeah, exactly. You pay to look sick. It's uh, a yeah. when I play uh, when I play Dark Souls or Elden Ring, I'm like, man, uh, no, yeah. They're like, man, DJ, you know that's the weakest gear you can have. I was like, I'm playing Fashion Souls. I want to yeah. look dope as fuck when I'm slaying <laughs> dragons. Don't Hell come yeah. in with that. Don't come with that negative energy. Oh, okay, yeah. now I want to talk about. I, I want to go right into Peak Ninja. Now I followed Hell your yeah, career bro. right when you started playing your play Fortnite, and then I felt like when you hit your peak, the, the start of the climb of the peak. And you correct me if I'm wrong. Was you had Drake, and I feel like oh, you yeah. had Nicki Minaj. I don't know who else was on it. Was I remember a, Drake. It was Travis Scott, Drake, Travis Scott. and Juju Smith-Schuster. Okay, and you guys like were all trio. playing Fortnite together. Yeah. And then what did you guys get to concurrent viewers on Twitch? So that was, um, I think we peaked at like 590,000. And then, and then we, so that definitely, dude, like without a doubt, like, so before, people don't know this, before that happened, I was averaging already like 80 to 100,000 viewers. Yeah. Yes, like, you were. It, so, like, people, like, a lot of people will be like, like, I, do I think that put the, put me on the map, like, everywhere else in, like, pop culture and, like, globally? 100%. Like, mm. it's not even a question. But in terms of, like, streaming, like, I was already pulling the numbers. I was already popping off, man. I was already pulling 4 million, 5 million, 6 million, 7 million views a YouTube video, just literally re- uploading gameplay um, from my stream, just cutting it, uploading it, you know, dropping 20 eliminations, whatever. Yep, but, yep. But because you're putting it work in, you you oh, yeah, that's dude. what a lot of people don't understand. It's like you were fucking killing it. Like yeah. when you're playing, you're. I don't think I got on Drake's radar, bro. Like, exactly. Yeah, you're you're building and you were killing people, and then yeah. you were doing like twenty bombs, twenty five bombs, and oh, you win yeah. the game. And people who don't know how to play Fortnite, obviously, you know, our our listeners are more sports, but. Yeah, my biggest passion is gaming. It's always gonna be gaming. Yeah. Because I feel like gaming, me, you can chop it up for about three hours. We can go on to talk about Legend of the Gaia and and you know Fortnite and Niskin and da 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 da. When it comes to MMA, if you don't follow the sport or if you don't train or you don't you know do it, you're like I'm I I I'm I'm totally lost. Yeah. Right. And so no, that's why I love gaming. It's tough, dude. It's tough to 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 follow. Like me personally, it's tough to follow MMA if I don't take like a like an active interest in in every single card like yep. there are so many incredible fighters everywhere all over the all over the place i'm and, saying and, that in different belts and different weights it's like dude uh, they're like dude, like who's like the main card I, I i won't know like half of them and it's not because yeah. they're not amazing or they're not some of the best fighters in the world or they're not massive it's because like i don't actively watch every single card and if i don't watch every single card i won't know or like you know the lead up to the fights right the banter yep. and the interviews and etc like i won't know what's going on and like Gaming isn't, yeah, I think that it, it's a lot easier to uh, follow, to follow, yeah, to follow who's popping off and, and whatnot. I mean, all you have to do is just check social media or literally, or like, you know, check yeah. the directory of Twitch in two seconds and you're just like, yeah. oh, these are the biggest streamers. Exactly. It's like, okay, let's get back to Peak Ninja. You Hell do yeah, that bro. stream, you do that stream with Drake, Travis Scott, the boys. And then after that, I felt like it just went wham. Like, I think at one point you had what? Two hundred thousand subscribers, uh, excuse me, subscribers <laughs> yeah. on, on 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 um on Twitch, on Twitch, which means they're paying they're paying subscribers. A lot of people on YouTube, if you're subscribed, you don't pay anything, but if you're yep. a member, you pay. So, what was your peak subscriber like uh, count? Ed, right. Ed, so, count. so our peak viewer count of all time, like viewer count, was Ninja Vegas, which was like I think it was a couple months after the Drake stream. It, it was six hundred like sixty thousand. So that was like that was my <laughs> peak. Yeah, that, we're, we're never breaking that ever again. By the way. <laughs> So yeah. that was our that was our peaks. It was 660k uh, Ninja Vegas. It was amazing, super incredible event. Courage and Lupo casted it, uh, and they were incredible. And then the the most subs I've ever had at one time I think was I, I could not give you an exact number, but it was like 267,000. Damn. Oh yeah, bro. Damn. Which you just do the math. I was it was it was uh, just dumb you know, money. You're like baby, you want to buy dude, this house right here? You want to buy this house right here? Which house you want to buy, happened, honey? Bro, it was <laughs> a three point. So it was like three dollars and fifty cents per sub times like two hundred sixty-two. Eleven to three times 
$262,917,000 a month in, in, in one month. Well, obviously, like, I, it, I, it, it fluctuates. It fluctuates. I, oh, yeah, it's a massive yeah. dip, especially the reason I hit that was because person was because it was like they just announced not only did they just have Twitch Prime, like Twitch Prime was relatively new, yep. but they also did. And this is why it's so huge, dude, when Twitch Prime and they don't do this anymore. I, I don't know if they've done this ever, like ever, if they've done this since, um, but they did a skin that you could get in Fortnite. If you had a Twitch, if you used, if you had Twitch Prime, or if you use Twitch Prime, so if you linked your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you would get Twitch Prime for free, yep. and then and then you could use that to redeem a, a, a free, essentially free, Fortnite skin. Any right? skin? No, no, no. Just it was a, oh, it was a, okay, it was okay. a Twitch Prime skin by Twitch. Twitch and Fortnite did a deal. Uh, if you used the Twitch Prime, linked it to your account, your gaming account, it would go into your Fortnite like Epic account, and you would get a skin uh, without having to like buy it in the store. And I was just telling everyone and their grandmother to redeem their Twitch Primes <laughs> because, dude, who doesn't want a free skin? Yeah, uh, yeah that was I reason, agree. That was the reason we skyrocketed to that much to begin with. But uh, Gotcha. It was nuts, but man. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This podcast is sponsored by Via Hemp. Now, Via Hemp is a high premium hemp product company. They got products across all spectrum of him i love the product so much boys they got the high love get you not right feeling feeling real good inside make you love yourself make me love your, your loved one this is the bio revive thc free 90 milligrams of cbd had an amazing workout today and i want to make sure i can recover for tomorrow's workout and thursday and we got a double on friday hmm so tasty. Some of the other high premium hemp products they have is the flower with THCA. Let's pop this bad boy open. Woo! One of the cool things I love about uh, hemp is that it comes to your door directly, discreetly. It comes in a box hidden in a package that nobody's gonna know what it is. If you guys wanna give Biohemp a try, you're gonna be 21 and over. Check the link in the description below. Check out the website and make sure you use my promo code MIGHTY. That'll save you up to 15% on your order. And when you guys do that, they're gonna ask you, who sent you? Let them know I sent you. Let them know the Mighty One sent you. It helps and it supports our show, The Mighty Cast. Shout out to Biohemp for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to our guests. But see, I think you did something different that a lot of streamers didn't do. I saw that you had a brand. Like, my kids were coming yeah. home like, Dad, I need a ninja skin. I'm like, I know that motherfucker. You don't need a skin. <laughs> da, 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 da. No, but, I, but they bought they buy this skin. Then you had clothes in Target. You had yeah. underwears. And then you had a... Uh, you had a stream, not a streaming, you had a CD where you had a lot of music yeah, on there. Works. Ninja Works. Walk me through that process of that mind because for me as a professional athlete, you know, I'm in that process. I'm at the tail end of my career. I'm focusing on building my brand, building the, the podcast. Yeah. We just got up. We're dropping our merch here pretty soon or we already dropped our merch to put on when we release this uh, podcast. Yeah. But for you, it was like you made all this money and then you were like, ah, I'm not going to do anything with it. You started to build your brand even massive. You're, yeah. you're almost in that peak of ninja. Walk me through that mindset that you had when you're like, okay, we're making $900,000 a month or $500,000 a month. Let's do something with this. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a shout out to Jess, obviously my wife, who was my manager at the time and load and loaded who, you know, we saw what we had. We saw, we had this like global, just like phenomenon in the gaming world and the streaming world, um, with Fortnite. And like, we knew that in order to, you know, I've always kind of had like my shticks, right. Mm -hmm. And like, that's kind of, I feel like that streamers have that streamers have like a shtick. I wouldn't call it a brand and some do like, but it, it was like, how do we, you know, make it like how do like what the fuck is a brand? Like at the end of the day, you know, I'm serious. Like, yeah, you're right. You're right. People I talk hear you. about it. And it's like and like, dude, you know, you you you. It, it starts with like it, you could obviously be. It's as simple as merch, right? But it starts with like you know, you take your you take your sticks, right? And then you kind of, I don't want to say monetize it because it was for, personally, it was it wasn't about making money. It was about like establishing me in the space, right? In like yep. different spaces, so. Like for example, like the headbands, right? Like we did a we did a Red Bull Ninja headband, something that I I you know I started wearing after wins, right? I put on this like yellow bandana in my mm -hmm, basement, mm -hmm. um, and and like that was like a part of the of the of the Ninja brand in a way, um, you know. So we started we started selling like headbands, and then and then like we had we did a lot of merch deals as well, and like I wish we had more. I'm happy we did them. I wish that I personally along with loaded were like a lot more careful about what we said yes and no to because we were everywhere 
and it was almost a bad thing. Like we were everywhere. Like we were in Target. We we weren't. Uh, we had a, a ninja Nerf gun, but it wasn't a Nerf gun. It was the it was their competitor, their second number two. So we were mm. there, and then we had we we had like a, dude, we had a, a hundred different ninja shirts that came out. Like eventually to the point where there was so much, right? Like it, it ended up being like in Fiverr, right? And like and now it's like okay. Is there anything wrong being in Fiverr? No, but like, you know, like it, it's not a good look seeing a ninja shirt for a dollar. You know what I mean? Like, got right, so, it. So like, so we, it, it, it basically watered down your brand. It's like, if you, it wasn't you know, special, you, right? Gotcha. Like it, it wasn't special. It wasn't. And like, I think that if I had to do it all over again, we would have been, Justin and I would have been a lot more meticulous and thoughtful with like the drops that we did. I think we would have done more drops. Like for some reason that was just not in my, in our, like we knew, you know, shoe drops and we know how hype these things get, they sell out, et cetera. Yes. Like we just didn't, we missed it. Like that's a, that's a, that's a regret that I actually don't even, I didn't even think about until just now is like, I really wish we, we came out with like high end, high end merchandise, like hundred thieves level. Like I'm wearing one of their, one of Nate shots, you know, hundred thieves shirt right now. It's just high end, high quality. It's obviously expensive, but like, dude, this quality, like this shirt's going to last forever, bro. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? And like, and, and, and that's, what's important. So like, I wish we did more, I wish we did more thoughtful drops, um, but yeah, that it was, that's what it was about. Like our goal and we did it, it worked. Our goal was to be everywhere. Our goal was to be everywhere, have merch everywhere. We did like, you know, we did plushies and we did toys and we did, um, you know, anything and everything. And then obviously the Ninja skin and Fortnite helped. That was a very big moment of like the Ninja yeah. brand. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Sure. It was everywhere. Like, they, yeah. I mean, I, I felt, I, th I think it was a good thing. Right. And like now hearing that from you, it makes me like with our, with the mighty merch we're doing season one season two season three that's, that's just nice. fr that's just from like uh you know the creator of fear of god essentials he goes hey here's season one here's mm -hmm. a limited run once it's out it's out it's all high quality it is what it is then you got to wait for season two then obviously you can go on goat or you know feature or mr porter to get like the people who sell it at the market or whatever the gray yeah. market because yeah. it's not that much but now hearing that you have regrets i'm gonna learn from you and just do season that's what i already have uh, planned but but I always thought about like when I do my brand that I don't care about. It's not about making money. It's just about. It's not. Sp it's, it's about spreading no. your flag everywhere. Yeah. It's like yeah. if somebody's walking down the street, goes, "Oh shit, that's a mighty shirt. That's yeah. a mighty swag. That's Demetrius Johnson." Literally. Instead of like you know, I don't think a lot of people make uh, a lot of money off merchandise, depending on how much you move the volume of it. It's all volume, right? So like, it, uh, in, unless you're a piece of shit who's you know. <laughs> a I, piece I'm of serious. Shit. No, I, 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 I'm not calling anyone out by any means, but like, unless you're literally popping off like $10 shirts and you're selling them for 50, right? Like yeah. mar margins wise, like you're not making money on merch. Like you're not making great money on merch. Yeah. Um, like one of the things I always tell my merch team every single time, I'm like, I'm always like, the, you know, I'll be like, Hey, I want to do something like this. Like, uh, you know, I want to do this shirt or this, this, or this, I want to add this, like make it like the more like custom I make it, et cetera, yeah. the more high quality I make it. They're always like, it's going to cost more. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I was I, I like my first con like my message them always them like take it out of my cut or something like that or like give me yeah. less of a cut to like make up for it because you're absolutely right it's not about it, who gives a fuck about about making money off of merchandise unless like you're like taylor swift size right where she's probably making hundreds of millions yeah. um but like it, it's about people being like dude this guy's rocking you know like you just said a mighty mouse shirt like it's it's that it's like it's getting it out there it's getting people to be like dude nice nice drop nice shirt like that's rare as hell too which is another thing that we've been doing like we've actually minimized our drops significantly um a lot of people like you know the the team that we work with killer merch they're incredible um no, same with us that's who we work yeah, with <laughs> i love them bro they have great stats great statistics and they let us know like we had um every time we did a drop like last year uh in 2023 we had one item that just killed it Right. But like yep. we had so many amazing items. Yeah. And, and it was one of those things where it's like people just weren't spending the money. And like, I don't want people to have to choose to spend the money because I care about my, my audience's money. So I was like, all right, let's just like, like, let's just focus and like, and just do, and this is their idea. And I loved it. And they're like, well, let's just do one item, one yep. item a month, one drop and make it limited. And it's like, hell yeah. That sounds great. It makes like you want people to value the item. You want people to be like, Hey, I got this. It was yep. a part of a collection or I like your season idea. I think that's great. Um, 
Because that's, 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 that's copyrighted 2024 Mighty Mouse uh, Demetrius Johnson. Uh, <laughs> Johnson uh, season one. I love it, dude. I love it. I mean, I, I honestly, I might, I might steal it myself and, and in a way and do like a like a battle pass drop. Hey, like, oh, there you go. You know, like Especially, fort, oh. make, it, make it like a Ninja Fortnite collab and just call it like the battle pass collection or something like that. That would be pretty sick, actually. I, I love it. that. I love that. Okay, now let's, uh, now this is something that came up yeah. that was very interesting in the world of streaming. At the, mm. at the time, it was just, you know, Twitch. You had Twitch. And then you had Facebook Gaming. Huh. And then you had Mixer, right? Yeah. And then you decided to leave Twitch where you're killing it at, and you go to Mixer. Walk me through that 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 transition you're doing. And then uh -huh. Mixer ended up closing, and oh, you yeah. came they back. But, but they shut down. But in your contract, the word on the street, you can confirm oh, yeah. or, or deny it that if they were to uh, close, you got paid out the rest of your contract. But talk me through your process of going to Mixer when you're killing on Twitch. You're like, you know what? I'm taking a leave of faith. I'm going to go to Mixer with Microsoft. Talk me through that. Oh, yeah, man. So first off, I want to give a quick shout out to my boy, Arish. Uh, he, was my, he was our lawyer that that put that in, the, that made, made us not sign that contract until they basically said, like, if you guys go under, or not even under, if you guys just somehow something happens, like, he's getting paid out in full. And they were like, okay. So him putting that in there uh, was obviously the reason that, yes, we did get we did get paid out in full, and we only streamed for, like, 12 or 13 months out of the two-year contract. Let's fucking go. Oh, shout dude, out to your listen. lawyer. <laughs> shout out to Arish, bro. He killed it. Um, and, and, and I also want to say real quick, and I've always said this, and people know it, like, I wanted Mixer to succeed. I did not go just for the bag. I had a delicious and nutritious meal uh, meal. Uh, a delicious and nutritious offer as well from Twitch, um, but it was the reason that we we left for Mixer was because like I enjoyed the platform, I thought it was good, and uh, I was like, dude, this will like set the tone of like you can pay a streamer to you know switch sides essentially, right? Mm. Like just how just how you know a, an NBA player, an NFL player switches from one team to another because they get a better contract, like yep, um, and like the inflation behind these deals was real in my opinion, it still is. And they're also almost all gone. Like it's not happening anymore. So like I definitely yeah. started a wildfire of, of these deals and people choosing between Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, etc. Um, and yeah, the the reason I went was was for that reason. I wanted to 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 like break that space and like let people know like, hey, you can make a very large earnings, like a very massive sum of money to to, to be exclusive on a on a platform. Um, and a lot of people made their bags, and you know, unfortunately, it's not as uh, not as common anymore. But, uh, dude, yeah, it 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 went under. Mixer went under, and it's because they sucked, dude. And what I mean by they <laughs> suck is they didn't they didn't listen, dude. And what I mean by they didn't listen is if, if those you don't know, Microsoft owns Mixer, but yep. Mi but but Mixer wasn't a solo entity, right? So like Mixer couldn't. Uh, you know, one of the things we, it's small things that make people enjoy stream. It's small things that make people enjoy a website or a platform. And one of the biggest issues is you had to have a Hotmail account. Yeah, you had to have a Hotmail account or a, micro, or a Microsoft email to, to be able to view, to, to, to watch to and log do in and watch. Yeah. yeah. Dude. And, and I, I had to have, I've said this, I had, I've said this a hundred times. I've had to have my entire family reach out personally to, to like our, our contacts, because obviously we had contacts because, you know, we had the massive contract. Yep. reach out to them to get their account like fixed and like to log in because they were having issues like like it, it just it was the weirdest shit so it was impossible to land people on the page yep no one was signing up because it, like who the hell is going to make an entirely new email to just to watch like a it, like it, it's Not, it's a barrier and no one wants to do that right the more barriers yep. you have people aren't going to do it so that was number one they didn't fix it they wouldn't fix it cringe number two Changing the username. They give you a username off the start. So that's another step. If you want to make your own individual username, you got to go into your account. You got to go into your settings after you've logged in. And then you got to edit and you got to edit your name. It's, e it's easy <laughs> to damn, do. That, but that's so thing, much shit. Like, why not? Like, let me just choose my name. Why not? Let me type my name in. It's available. Boom. Account's made, right? So yep. so that was an issue. Uh, everyone's chat was the same color. I hate that. I think it's still like that on YouTube. Everyone's username was green. One of my favorite things about Twitch when I'm on there, and it's still one of my favorite things about Twitch, is the color of your username. You can change it, and it can be like as, as custom as possible. And I have viewers, and I have subscribers and moderators that have a, a unique color, and I know how short or long their name is. And I'll like see out of the corner of my eye if I see that color and like yep. the length of the name, I know it is. I like and, and it like I'll get like butterflies a little bit, right? Like it's like, oh my god, that's my boy. You know, yep. they're here, right? Like this is sick. And M Mixer didn't have that. Everyone just looked bland. All the messages were blurring together. So the chat experience as a streamer, it wasn't pleasant. Um, 
And yeah, and they, 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 it was like we would, we were having these conversations to the people at Mixer, and unfortunately, at the end of the day, they needed to go to, like, it could have been, you know, and who knows how busy Microsoft is. They had to go to Microsoft and be like, yeah. "Hey, can we make these changes?" And they were, and it, it was almost always a, you know, no, no, or or, no. or God knows, maybe you never even got to them. Yeah. So That's all of our feedback was just completely. I, I don't even want to say ignored. It just, you know. It didn't matter. It, it, it seemed like it was ignored because it, the mixer ended up collapsing. Bye it bye, was shut dude. down and it just disappeared. It was like once that happened, it yeah. was like, holy shit. But then you, I think Shroud went too, right? I think it was yep. Shroud. Yeah, as me well. and Shroud. Me and Shroud, the mixer boys, dude. Yeah, mixer boys. But then you both got paid out. It was like, I never forget, Dr. Respect goes, huh? How about Ninja, huh? Mixer closed down and he still gets all that money. Fuck! Because yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. He had an he, offer. I'm pretty sure he had he, a juicy offer. Yeah. Dude, I, we actually had. It's so funny you mentioned that. I don't know if I can say this, but like, I won't say names. But a lot of people in the industry at the time, like, we were all spitballing, like, "Hey, dude, like, let's just all go here, right? Like, yeah. let's all just take a deal and like just ride this out for like you know a year or two, like yep. with each other." Yep. Um, and you know, a lot of people made a lot of people made decisions on about where they were going because some people were going and some people weren't. And I say some people were going when it literally was just me and, and Shroud. Um, yeah. But hey, dude, sucks to well, suck, bro. Yeah. Well, I I love that concept that you brought up that you went there to show that you can make money outside of the big, you know, basically Twitch and yeah. how I relate it to my world and mixed martial arts is that you have so many different organizations. You have yeah. UFC, which would be the Twitch because everybody wants to be there. Everybody wants to they make the most money. But yeah. then you have you have you know one championship where I'm at and people make great money over there. You have PFL, Bellator, they make great money. And then you have you know the the, the minor leagues and where when I left the UFC, I I had a better offer at one championship. And I was like, you know, I'm taking a leap of faith. I believe in myself. You get a guy like Sergio Pettis who left for Bellator and he's making more money than probably the champion is at, you know, the UFC, the, the flyweight champion, because he was yeah. a flyweight at that time. So for to hear that, you know, you guys, you and Shroud went to Mixer. Some people went, I know Dr. Lupo, eventually he went to YouTube. Yeah. Tim and Tapman Courage, they were at YouTube. 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 Um, then, I mean, Max Holloway, good friend of mine, he went to Facebook Gaming. Now he's with uh, Kick.com. Kick. Oh, yeah. And he's so, paid. Oh, yeah. And, and, and so some of those it was very rare to see somebody who was killing it on Twitch move to Mixer. And I always wanted to get your insight on that and then to, you know, have the confirmation that you got paid out in full yeah. when the company closed. Yeah, dude, I wanted it to work so bad, bro. Like uh, a lot of people, like I was live every day, bro. Like, I, yeah, think my minimum, I think my minimum, my minimum hours a month, I think it was at like 100 or 150, but I was streaming like 325 hours a month for Damn. like- 10 months dude i was doing like 12 hour streams every day like mm. i wanted it to work so bad on that platform i was like I, I i i you know i said to my wife i said to myself i was like i me not putting in the work me not streaming on this platform is not going to be the reason that it doesn't succeed right it's yep. not going to be the reason that like they like i didn't want them for a second to be like oh god great this guy got because like honestly let's be real a lot of people do it on kick there are a lot of people yeah. that got paid on kick and they're not and then and they're not even streaming on it anymore. And it's like I was like, dude, I'm gonna fucking take this deal because not only do I believe in it, but I'm like, I'm gonna grind my ass off and I'm gonna try to make this platform blow up. Yep. And I, you know, and I, I was I put the fucking work in, dude, but it does not matter because my body. You, yeah, you, you gotta listen to the community. Okay, so that you go back, you, mixer closes, yeah. and then and then now I felt like you were the first person to say who who led the charge, like we shouldn't be exclusive to one contract we should be able to stream everywhere and then here you are you're streaming on twitch you're streaming on facebook you're streaming on fucking twitter you're oh, streaming yeah. on youtube you're streaming everywhere now what was the decision to do that instead of like you know what? i'm just gonna go back to twitch you guys want to watch me watch me at you know twitch.tv slash ninja yeah yeah dude that one so a lot of people don't know like i streamed for a year for free and Damn. like i don't care how much money you have like taking a year and not making any money like from from streaming like yeah we made we had like a couple brand deals here and there but like yeah that's never fun right to just be like all right we're basically just blowing money every money yeah. all the money that we're spending is not like being recouped unless you know our investments are popping off um but yeah like i i, I wanted to stream everywhere i thought it was just the right thing to do what talking to jess and talking to my assistant andre i was like dude i've always felt like for a long time like why not be like why doesn't twitch because it was twitch was one of the biggest you know 
it yeah. was in their terms. Why why the hell can you not be a partner there and then multicast somewhere else? Because like no one is going to leave Twitch to go watch you stream on another platform. Like that's just you know, Twitch has the the live streaming market and and yep. it's very enjoyable to watch a stream on Twitch. So I was, you know, it was one of those things where it's like you guys aren't confident in, like I don't know, I don't know what the issue was. It's like are you guys not <laughs> are you guys not confident enough that like your platform and your product is better so that if people are streaming elsewhere they're going to leave Twitch and and go watch elsewhere but like one of their issues and this is what I talked with Dan about and Dan's an, an an amazing CEO. I absolutely love him. I love his transparency. I love how open he is. Uh we had a bunch of conversations about it and like their biggest fear was and people still do this and I think they get away with it. But their biggest fear was going live on Twitch and then like sending them while you're live to the other platform, like trying uh, to trying to open the door and like push them somewhere else yep. and then end Twitch and then finish there. Like that was one of the things so it's like they, they didn't want streamers just pulling their viewers away to another platform and trying to poach them. And I get that. And I, I, I get that. Uh, but now, you know, fast forward a year later, here we yeah. are, dude. We can yep. all stream everywhere, and it, you know, it makes sense. I wanted to make, I wanted to like a proof of concept, right? Where like, I wanted to prove and have numbers, and be like, listen, I streamed for a year straight, and like, not only did my Twitch numbers like grow a little bit, they mm -hmm. definitely didn't go down because I was multicasting, right? They definitely yeah. didn't yeah. go down because I was live on YouTube, Facebook, and, and TikTok. Like, if anything, I was able to take people from TikTok while I was multicasting and, and actually and pull bring them, over them to Twitch. Twitch. Exactly. Here we are, well, bro. That, yeah, and and look 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 to this date. Twitch is still, in my eyes, the biggest streaming platform for oh, yeah. gaming, right? I mean, yeah. YouTube does a good job, but YouTube, you know, when I was on Twitch, I, I streamed for fucking nine years on Twitch, and my channel just would not grow. Yeah. And I think that's probably you know my problem, my fault, because I never wanted to. You'd ask streamers, hey, you want to collab? You want to collab? And they're like, ah, nah, I'm not gonna collab. I got my own, you know, got my yeah. own thing going on. And for me, I hate it playing. I wanted to play games I wanted to play, right? Yeah. And Fortnite wasn't one of those games. Like, you got to follow the trend. Like, oh, Fortnite's big right now. Oh, COD's out. Oh, this oh, yeah. is out. Yep. I just I just couldn't find myself doing it. Then once I switched to YouTube, it just, my whole channel blew up. When I stream, I would average, you know, maybe 250. I know those were pennies to you, Michael. No, they're no, big no. to still, me. Dude, still, yeah. dude. <laughs> depending, on, depending on what you were getting, that's great, man. Like, yeah, you're yeah. seeing growth always. Yeah, so it, it was massive. Like, if I were to play UFC 5 or UFC 4, I would have, you know, 3,000 viewers. I'm like, I don't like playing the game. I'm not going to mm. do it just to get the viewership. I want to play and, and enjoy myself. And here's a question for you. How do you still, like, obviously you enjoy streaming, but how do yeah. you find the energy to get on there and play the game, like, all the time? <laughs> like, like, how much are you streaming now? Like, what, what's your streaming schedule? So, so the last couple of days I've been doing like six hour streams. Um, but like my streaming schedule lately, I would say pretty much this entire year has been like Monday through Friday, eight to 12. So like, Damn. Four, yeah, but, but like, Oh, hey, had 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. 8 a.m. to 12. So 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So oh, four hours. That's not bad. That's no, not no, bad. No, 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 that's because that's, 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 you don't have kids yet, right? It's just you No, and I don't Jess. have kids yet. So Yeah, so you just wake up like, oh, fuck, I have breakfast, da -da -da -da, play, da -da 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 you're done. 12 o'clock. I usually go work out, uh, come back, have a show or something like this, you know, record a podcast, and then I'm free for the night. And I love yep. that. Like, yep. I, I love that. I, it's been one of my favorite things about moving down here to Florida. We have so much to do, and the sun's out, and there's, you know, the, like going to the beach and having some brewskis, watching the mm. football games, whatever, whatever the case may be. Like, having that time right now has been incredible. But it, it, I'm, I'm at the mercy of, like, right now personally, I'm at the mercy of Fortnite, like, because I love playing other games on stream. But of course, you, you like you, you have to think about what gets you the most viewers for sure. Yep. That has that has to be that's important. But um, if you aren't known for multicasting or like multi being a multi gamer, mm. like you have to really navigate the space in a, in, a, in a much different way. So like if I wanted to play another game, like I would start with Fortnite, get my viewers up, you know, hit my peak viewership, and then I would swap to the game that I want to try out or yeah. like or like to a different game. And that way you start, you, you know, and you get your chat excited about it. You get them hyped about it. And like, that's a way to transition into another game. Yep. It's a little, but, it's, yeah. But, but, but my question here is that you made so much fucking money. You buy, yeah. I mean, you, you I don't made have so to much, stream, dude, but like, you don't have to stream, I right? I still love it. 
Exactly. So you don't have to stream. So why don't you be like, hey guys, like this game's dropping, like Elden Ring. Like I don't know if you played a new Eld uh, Shadow of Elder Tree. I haven't played the DLC, and I almost I actually stopped streaming my Elden Ring playthrough like years ago or like a year ago, like halfway yeah, so, through. So why? So why do you feel? I feel like now I was like, guys, I, I got like fifty million to bank. I got mm. you know investments that are paying me X, Y, and Z. I'm gonna play this fucking game. You guys either come watch me or not. I'm not. I'm done playing Fortnite. Yeah. Like why have it? That's how I feel. Like I do it now. Like I'll play Street Fighter Six. So like, man, you should play this game. I was like, I don't want to play that game. I don't need to play that game. I don't care yeah. to play that game. Have you ever had that come across? I mean, it's mm -hmm. no disres It's no disrespect no, to the community. No, no, no. You're not dis No, absolutely not. not right? Not like you're, no. you're giving them a good. Uh, experience to experience the first time playing a new game. Well, I would also right? like. Let's be real here. It's not like I would just play a game and, and just say "fuck you" to my audience and not try to be entertaining <laughs> and not try to be entertaining. Like, so if I did play another game, like, yeah. it, it would still be you know epic. It would still be the same, of course, you know, the same fucking shit as my Fortnite streams. But like, I it's it's still just an ego thing, bro. For sure, for mm. me personally, like I don't like. Like I know, I know that like viewership is low in general for gaming across the board right now. Yeah. But like, dude, I already get it. Like, I'll st I'll be at, at like ten thousand viewers on Twitch, five thousand, six thousand on YouTube, four thousand mm -hmm. on TikTok. I'm pulling twenty k, right? Yeah. Which is fucking amazing for. Yeah. Uh, you look at anyone, like you go to anyone and be like, hey, I can pull twenty thousand viewers live streaming. They'll be like, oh my god, bro. Like, now, yeah, nowadays, yeah, oh yeah, that's like, massive. That's, that's massive. Like, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it doesn't matter because of what I used to pull. So I already was pulling, you know, at, my, at peak, like concurrent, not during not during those big sessions, like 100K, 90K, 80K. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. so to go from that to this, I've already had to like check my ego millions of times, like to not fucking end my own life. I'm not even joking. Like, dude, the shit, <laughs> uh, bro, to, put it, like, to put it lightly, the shit I get every day, everywhere, it's insane. I don't even know why I'm here. I'm not even yeah. joking. I don't even know well, why I'm still making content. Every day on everyone else, everyone streams, everyone else's posts, everyone else's comments, I fucking post a video, washed. Washed up. <laughs> you no said, one cares, bro. See, so you, you, you need to get on my level and just be like, when they say wash, I'm like, yes, I just washed $20,000 uh, in the bathtub. So uh, I, know, I hope you, hey, I just, thanks for, thanks like, for stopping like, by and leaving a comment. Dude, you're a fighter, bro. Like, Demetrius, you have like this aura around you. So it doesn't matter. And people expect you to be cocky. I'm like a fucking gamer. <laughs> and I start flexing. Like, I pull an XQC where I just keep flexing my $250,000 watch. Like, yeah. my community would look at that and be like, bro, fuck you. Like, remember where you came from, all this shit. And I would think that too. Uh, yeah. So yeah. like, I do it. I flex on people when they're fucking assholes. Yes, of course. The and assholes. The, I'm not like saying the, the twats. But like if someone calls me washed, like I get that like I get that a hundred times a day. It's not unique. Yeah. So yeah. I'm used to it. Well, but, you should ask like well, I'm not ready to go down to to like a thousand <laughs> viewers. I, I'm not ready for it, bro. I can't. I, I, at that point I might as well just retire. Yeah, we'll just get out. We'll just get out before you get a thousand viewers. I don't. know. I just find it like you know, because I, like I said, I've been following your career for a very, very, very long time. I used yeah. to. I was one of those, you know, subscribers where you have ninety thousand, you know, viewership, and I'll be subscribed to your channel, oh, and yeah. then you know, and I obviously the chat's going crazy, so I would never post this because you would never see yeah. it. But you I know, remember some of your resubs. Yeah, and so sometimes it will go down to, you know, now you're at maybe 20,000 viewerships. Yeah. But then I'm like, there has to be a point in time where you're like, guys, I, I'm not playing Fortnite. Like, I want to try the new Elden Ring, kick I'm back, ready. grab a beer, yeah. grab some popcorn, and let's jo enjoy this adventure together. Yeah. But then I, it, 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 I'm getting there, bro. DJ, I'm okay. getting there. I, I'm okay. getting, I promise Good. you, I'm getting there. Like, I already tried doing a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth stream. I was mm -hmm. doing that. Viewers would drop to like 1,000, 2,000. Uh. I'm sorry, man. But see, that's so crazy. Like, it's just like, I and just that's just suck it up, man. Like, yeah. first off, that game in general wasn't already getting a lot of viewers. Like, and, like, yeah. so it wasn't, it wasn't like an Elden Ring. Elden Ring's pulling numbers. Um, yeah. Of course, you know, um, let me just go fuck myself. All the games that I love and want to stream are, aren't like, dude, like, what was an OG yeah. game, Final Fantasy XI? Dude, that game would get five viewers, right? Like, I remember you playing that. You were playing yeah. that, oh, and that I'm, was like, bad. I'm like, I'm that like, I'm like, that was bad. That Final was Fantasy was after kick. Yep. Uh, oh man, that was yeah. terrible. Bro. I remember you were playing Final Fantasy XI because you and a family member had a like a, a certain server you guys would play on, right? Yeah, yeah we were playing on a yeah. private server. Me a and my private brother. server, and it's like. I'm sitting there, I'm like, hey, he enjoys the game. And I, no. I actually enjoyed watching you do that because I could tell that you enjoyed that, right? It's like for me, like I love Final Fantasy XIV, yeah. A Realm Reborn, but everybody hate it. They're like, yeah. we can play UFC. I was like, I do that every day in the gym. I don't need to simulate a fight because I can go get in a fight. I don't yeah, need to do literally. that. <laughs> oh, I, I get it, bro. I am so close, dude. I am so close to just being like, new game comes out, we're going to rock it. Like, we're yep. going to do a playthrough. Um, and, and, 
and and that's for me personally. That's why I feel like it ruined streaming. It ruined gaming for me. It's tough, when, bro. Like like you said, like if Legend of the Guy were to come out tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow you'd be yeah. like, shit. Do I'm I playing. stream? I would like, play that game. That's a different. <laughs> Bad example, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Right? Like, yeah, it's. Do you want to? You know, I don't even. I don't know, man. I, I. I don't know. I've been streaming for so fucking long, dude. I don't. Yeah. I am. I'm. I'm obliterated mentally. I don't even. I don't even like. I don't plan shit anymore, bro. Like, I'm not gonna. Say, I don't plan like. Oh, dude, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a one week long Elden Street. Like what Kai does. Like Kai. Kai, the Kai on that Kai. level, it's unbelievable. Yeah unbelievable thought going into this right unbelievable like production value he, he mm. freaking did a commercial for his dlc for the Elden ring like i'm i can't I'm 33 years yeah. old i'm over it <laughs> like, yeah yeah like am i am i gonna do a playthrough maybe but am i gonna do it like that like i don't i don't know man i don't have the time to do that right now yeah because you have so you have so much more stuff going on and like you said yeah. you've been streaming for so damn long and before yeah. you jumped into streaming you were a professional halo player i'm gaming dude right you're a gamer you're, my you're, whole you're, life yeah and so for me it's like when i see someone who's seen what you've gone through like professional gamer at the highest level halo fps yeah. then you know you jump into fortnite you become peak ninja you got merchandise all over the place you have ninja works you got a you know thing going on spotify then you yeah. jump to mixer and you leave mixer then you come back then you're multicasting and then now it's like you went from like 666,000 concurrent viewers now you're at maybe 20,000 depending on the little game baby, you're playing yeah. little baby and it's like I, I don't know why they would say you're washed but to see the ups and then i don't want to call it down it's just it a different down, transition like, you could call it a different transition at the end of the day like for like you're i mean you're absolutely right like no one's ever gonna ride that high forever it's not possible no yeah like oh, it's, this uh, yeah it's just not I, possible dude like i had so many people telling me like especially youtube like the youtube community like the the, the workers they were like like tyler like this is not gonna last i was yep. like th i was like thanks for that um you know and i knew it wasn't i knew it wasn't gonna last obviously like at that level you can't be at that top for, for that long until you know it's gonna it's gonna drop off i knew it was gonna drop off um yeah. And I'm well, happy, dude. I'm fine. Yeah. See, I that's the biggest thing. Leave me alone, dude. Just enjoy the content. If you don't like it, don't comment. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. Like, even in any sport, basketball, even in the music industry, anything you do, eventually it's going to come to an end. And like I said earlier in the podcast, you were smart to have great people surrounding you who gave you the 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 blueprint. It's like, hey, hey, yeah. that 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 mixer deal, you made 15 million, whatever it was. We want to take three million of that and we're gonna throw it in, you know. The S P five hundred or the Nasdaq oh, yeah. or, oh, or, or the Dow. We're yeah, everywhere, right? bro. We're everywhere. Yeah. So that's so you don't have to have like your ego is like, you know what? Like I don't need like yes, the viewership is low, but you're doing it because you're passionate about yeah, streaming. Dude, I, right. I still and love gaming. I still love streaming and like I love my I love my my, my boys and, and like the, the the girls that I have that, you know, are longtime subs and like that community. I don't know. I uh I hear you, bro. Like I have Jess tell me consistently she'll she'll be like you can stop whenever <laughs> literally yeah, and like that's the best that's the best possible thing to have is like you know your significant other being like you can like whatever the next stage is like you know we'll figure it out but like we're good like if, if it gets too much for you to you know be ragged on i'm not joking when i tell you dude like my i am like 90 percent shit talked like everywhere everywhere Why? everywhere five percent ten percent you know is like my community, my diehards that are like, we love you, Ty. It's like, thanks, guys. But wow. I, and I, I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why. Like for so, it, it's people would rather tell me I'm fucking washed than like you know enjoy the moments that we had in in like the Fortnite days, right? Well, usually when I tell people, I was like, if somebody's gonna talk shit about you, they're not doing pretty well. Nobody, I know they're not doing well. But like, I know, yeah, exactly. But like, think about that. Somebody who's doing well in life never goes out of their way to put somebody down yeah absolutely nobody does that I, yeah. I i've i was just on a trip in texas i was hanging out with some amazing people and they're all very successful and yeah. not once in the conversation ever 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 come across about talking shit or putting anybody yeah. down. yeah not one right they're all successful people yeah. people who surround themselves with other assholes who aren't doing very well in their life always looking to put people down so i apologize ninja i think you're still killing it i, appreciate I think it, i loved your whole journey from you know uh beginning of halo and then peak ninja and then where you're at now i think it's it's very inspiring Thank because you, eventually everybody wants to make it to that level a yeah. football player basketball player they all want to make it to that that 
that level of wealth. Yeah. And once they make it to that wealth, you got to extend that wealth to generations, right? Oh, so yeah. when you when you just have children, they're gonna inherit that wealth, and you hope when you and in, they inherit that wealth, you teach them to pass that wealth down and keep it going, just like the yeah. Rockefellers, right? And so. Oh, yeah. I think what you've done is absolutely amazing. Um, real quick before we let you go, Michael, what you got for my man Ninja? Michael is just now getting into the gaming space. He doesn't really know a lot about gaming, sure. but I, I want him to get an opportunity to get in here and, and talk to you. Yeah, What's first up, bro? of all, shout out to the Chicago suburbs. I'm uh, I'm yeah, from bro. I'm from Northbrook, Illinois. D D oh, DJ nice. doesn't know he's a Seattle guy. He, he doesn't know how how ah. how cool the Chicago I, suburbs I, are and. Oh yeah, bro. Dude, I, I, Grace, actually, like, Grace Lake Central, bro. Oh yeah, right the Glen, here, Glenburg dude. North. Yeah, yeah. Represent. No. represent. <laughs> I've actually I fought in Chicago and sold out the arena there. So let's uh, okay. I've made more money in Chicago than you have, <laughs> no, my no, friend. You, let's let's not jump dead. the let's not jump the guns. Yeah, I don't know why UFC never goes to Chicago. Maybe it's since you went there. They're like, oh, DJ had such a stinker of a fight. We don't want to dis <laughs> disappoint those fans ever again. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I want to ask you a question about a game that I actually haven't talked to DJ about. GTA 6. It has uh -huh. been what what's your take on from my perspective looking out I'm not a huge gamer but it's like you got this mm. literally billions of dollar budget we're waiting mm. years and years for it. Do you like mm. this model of like really taking their time having this banger of a game or do you think it has taken like a little long and it's losing a little bit of luster? It's not losing luster at all. I think uh, I think from from everything I've seen, from like the, the the graphics to what you're gonna be able to do in this game, like I I don't, uh, it's gonna be sick. It's going to be. It, I mean, first off, you, you see how big role playing is right now in GTA Five. It, it, like, yeah. it's pretty much all they have left, obviously, because it's been so long. But dude, it is going to be the biggest game in the world for a very long time. Like, I think it's going to like until something else comes and knocks it off, like. Or like knocks it down a peg. Like I, dude, I think the RPing, the the role playing on GTA Six is gonna be out of this fucking world. Like just think about like again, just like the like the graphics are so much better. So yeah. it, it's gonna be even more enjoyable to watch it like as a spectator. Um, and I think it's just gonna be massive, dude. I think it's gonna be massive. I think you know the the storyline is gonna be great, of course, but like after the fact, like it's gonna it's gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be yeah. everywhere. It's gonna be ever for a long time. Yeah, and so. I think I think the biggest thing I jumped into a little bit of uh, Grand Theft Auto Five uh, RP, and there's only one server that it takes everybody in the no mom is on it, right? No pixel, right? And I even got whitelisted, but even for me to get into the fucking server, yeah. it took like three or four hours just to get into it. And I'm like, yeah. guys. I'm fucking 36 years old. I yeah. don't have four hours of waiting in line. Like, this is bullshit. Like, yeah. and I, you know, I see Shroud on there and I, I I see, you know, Lyric's brother on there, uh, Das Mini, he's on there playing. I'm like, how the fuck do these guys have time to get into the server? Yeah. But if they, they can maybe make they it. Maybe they just queue in beforehand, right? And Jesus just like predict fucking it. Christ. Dude, but I think. It's going to be better, though. Like, I'm pretty, very sure that they're going to have high level RP servers. Like, like. Yeah in advance like ready like the rp is they they realize how big their rp servers are and how big it is in their community and they're definitely going to be prepared for gta 6 so like, yeah there will be another no pixel like that who knows maybe like the level of like you know uh, how many people can be on at once is going to be you know raised as well which would be incredible um but dude for them like taking their time i think it's smart there's so many yep. games and so many companies that just have shat the bed because the the whoever you know owns the game is like Gray War Zone, good example. Yeah. Gray War Zone just came well, out and it's like they just threw it out there. Just, just threw cyber, it out dude, there. Cyberpunk. Yep. Cyberpunk Everybody's like, this a, game is uh, fucking horrible. Down. Yeah. It, it, it obviously, after you know all the fixes, everyone says it's an incredible game. But guess what? It doesn't matter, right? The yep. launch of the game was tainted and I, and I didn't play it because of it, right? I, yep. I, and, and it's things like that where you lose. You lose audience members. You lose, you know, streamers that aren't going to play it. Um, you know, Master Chief Collections with uh, with uh, 343 Industries. That was one of the biggest flops in all in the world. Like, of, of, like <laughs> you of all time. Lie. Bro, you would queue up. You, you, you queue up. First off, matchmaking would take an hour to get into a game. If you got into a game, it was like a one versus 15. Yep. You queue up into a Slayer. You're in a capture the flag, eight on 20. Like, dude, it was just bonkers. The game wasn't ready. They're like, But they had a deadline, and they're like, here you go. We got um, every, mm. And GTA 6 is not doing that. They're taking their time. I respect it. It's going to be well worth the wait. Uh, and it's going to be my very first GTA game I've ever played. Wow. So, yeah. well, I had a great, I, I grew up in a very 
You know, my mom was never going to let me play that game, dude. Hey, hey it, it, it is what it is. I mean, you're going to get the best, you know, version of Grand Theft Auto. Oh, and yeah. hopefully they do launch some um, RP servers with they the will. game itself. Because yeah. if they do that, I'm all on board. Because I enjoy playing a little RP that I got to on No Pixel and other ones. I absolutely love it. So hopefully yeah. they can do that. So Ninja, this is your opportunity to let the people know where can they find you, what you got coming up next, how can we support you in your next endeavors? Uh, dude, you can watch me uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 12, twitch.tv slash ninja or youtube.com slash ninja. Um, you know, drink nutcase, dude. Go to drinknutcase.com. Better for you, better tasting chocolate milk, dude. Gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, mm. actual sugar in there. No, no artificial sweeteners, anything like that. It's incredible, delicious, and nutritious. Uh, that's it. Boom. Pretty much it, man. You know, Boom. look forward that. to Ninja New Year's. We're running Ninja New Year's back at the end of this year, so... What's Ninja New Year's? What's that? We just have like a little celebration, right? Like okay. last year we did a, you know, it was like a like a mini party with a bunch of, you know, giveaways and games and shit like that. And then this year, I think we're doing more of like a poker style thing. We're going to do like a big poker game and then like a party in Vegas or some shit. Yeah, I saw that poker game with you and uh, Ryan Garcia and the way I he was, was fucking acting. I'm like, what? It, I'm uh, like, how fucking old are you, dog? Uh, I'm pray, like, pray for him, man. He's going through some shit. Um, <laughs> literally. I had, I had a good moment with him. Like, we had like a very bromance moment. Um, you know, I've seen what he's typed. I've seen what he's tweeted. I've seen like how he can get, but he wasn't like that. It was like, it was almost like I was talking to like, you know, one of my boys, like mm. that was taking it a little too far, but yeah. nothing crazy. And then, you know, apparently the second he got out of the table and he was doing those interviews, he just, he was the exact opposite. It was right back to, oh yeah, to completely different. So anyways. Boom. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this episode of the Mighty Cast. Make sure you go give Ninja a follow on Twitch and YouTube and support this man and buy some of that nutcase. Come as on, always, I am your host, Demis Johnson. That is my co-host, Michael Wanzover. And that is our guest, Ninja. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and also hit the bell to know we go live. What's going on, guys? Give you a big heads up. Mighty Merch is dropping right now. Season 1 has just dropped. All you got to do is go to the description below. It is shopmighty.com. We have delivered and we listen to the community. You guys have been begging, begging, Mighty, please give us a void shirt. And we have delivered the void shirt. And we also got Mighty Cap. And we also have the clean, dingling, just plain Mighty shirt. And we have some Mighty sweatshirts and the void sweatshirt as well. So if you guys want to step up your swag game of season one of the Mighty merch that's being dropped, go to shopmighty.com or check the link in the description below to get your brand new Mighty merch season one. What's going on, boys? Welcome back to another episode of the Mighty Recap. And we just had ninja on and this is part of the episode where we sit back and we basically recap what we just went through with our guest ninja i think the biggest thing is to hear from him that first off i'm so happy to have confirmation that he made all that money from the contract and mixer because that was the biggest thing he was killing it on twitch with making $960,000 to maybe the low end of $400,000. Obviously, that was a peak peak ninja. And then for him to leave Twitch and go to Mixer and take a leap of faith at a platform that had no community whatsoever. Like Twitch always have has a community because it has the biggest streamers under you. had Ninja, Dr. Lupo, Tim the Tapman, Courage. I mean, Nate Shot. I mean, Dr. Respect. The, I mean... Uh, lyric, asthma gold. I mean, the list just goes on. And for him to leave Twitch and go to Mixer, and then Mixer collapse, and then him still get paid, you know, that big ass salary. I heard it was in the millions. To hear that he got paid, absolutely amazing team around him. Absolutely amazing team. Yeah, and I, and I just respect the honesty of him of being like, dude, I reached this fucking ridiculous peak because ninja especially from someone like me who isn't really dialed into the streaming culture or anything like that everyone knew ninja though like you might not yep. know the more niche streamers but ninja was just absolutely took off blew up and and you know it is a different ninja right you know it's not the one the ninja of years ago where he's doing the Fortnite streams and he has your underwear and walmart or target or whatever it may be but i, th I think it's it's cool that he's adapted with the times and can still have a passion for streaming because it's it's understandable to have him see, okay, I, as he said, 90 to 100,000 a month, and now 
he's getting um i forgot what he said but maybe what he say? said he said 20 20 maybe oh, yeah, 20, 20 000, tw- that's right tw- 20 20 thousand if and here's the thing that i always hated about streaming it's it pisses me off is that it's only 20,000 viewers if he plays the game that everybody wants to see him play. If he plays Fortnite, he'll get 20,000 viewership across all the platforms. Twitch, YouTube, Twi- TikTok, Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it now, and Facebook Gaming. Where there's people who grind till this day when I was grinding back in 2013 that still have 90 viewers. 85 viewers because uh, they just their channel never grew, picked up so i feel like streaming for me was always a dead end because my channel never grew until i switched to youtube and started making content like the mighty cast the the void breakdown just breaking down videos instant reaction that's where my channel really blew up because that's what the people want to see and i'm also passionate about you know creating that content but i'm also very passionate about gaming but if i didn't play the ufc game or if i didn't play the hottest and newest game i wouldn't get any viewership and i uh it's very interesting to see someone who's made millions of dollars and doesn't need to stream still have that ego and he even mentioned that he has that ego that he doesn't want to have a thousand viewership. He doesn't want to have 500 viewership, even though it's a game that he truly, truly wants to play. No, and it's no different from us that I'm sure this episode, there's going to be people like, hey, you're not talking to Nate Diaz or Mike Perry or Rampage talking to Ninja. I'm, it might not be their type of things. They're an MMA fan or a combat sports fan. So, and and I, I totally get that, but I am a little bit surprised of ninja the reputation that he's built the streaming that you wouldn't just enjoy him playing some game that he's passionate about i i feel like that's more interesting to me i guess than doing the same games all the time fortnite oh. fortnite um it was cool to hear about gta 6 because for me on the outside looking in everyone knows that game is going to be so massive one of the biggest games of all time from a budget standpoint and probably will sell some of the most copies of a game ever. So it's cool to hear that he is going to do that and that he hasn't done a GTA before because in my eyes, I don't want to only see people play. Even you, I want to see you stream GTA. Like it's maybe, maybe oh, it's, it's not your it's thing. It's going to happen. Yeah, but I would love to just watch you do it because it's it's such a big game that it's so boring if people are like, oh, Ninja, I still want you to do Fortnite. Like, no, fuck that. Like GTA 6 is has been so long awaited i believe right now it's targeted for the end of 2025 so i I think it is good at least that he's saying i'm gonna i'm gonna stream that because i mean you have to do it yeah 1000 percent. i mean just so you i mean just give you context like a guy like doctor's respect who doesn't stream anymore he would stream call of duty first person shooter games were the games that he would play all damn day same with tim the tap man same with shroud um summit 1g those guys will all play first person shooters and they will play it all the time i feel like lyric was one of the ones who would just be he would play all the games that he wanted to play and he would still have a massive viewership and he always stayed on twitch and i think the biggest thing that i loved about talking to ninja was that he was like you said he was always honest about everything like he wanted mixer to succeed he did way more than his obligated hours that he had to and that's typically how it happens when you do a contract like i had an opportunity to go stream for facebook gaming and it was like you have to do like 25 hours a week and i'm like dude i'm not playing video games for 25 hours a week i don't even think i would play 25 hours a week um, if I didn't have children or, or I just, I would just get bored of gaming and he would do 12 hour streams every single day. Could you imagine that? Like playing, like I, I could not imagine even talking to somebody for 12 hours a day, doing a mighty cast for 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, that would be way too much. Just way too much. I, I just couldn't no, it, do it. It, but does, for him it to, does make me feel better about your workload because I respect our fans are so great and they're so appreciative of the work that you put into the YouTube and especially the reaction videos when we post that shit at like 3 or 4 a.m. And they're just like, how the fuck did, they, did those guys just do that? But it makes me earn another level of respect for these streamers because even the amount of work we're pumping into this YouTube, it is not you know, and, and, and Ninja's on the lower side, by the way, he's, he's only doing four hours because 
he's already built this reputation. He's not grinding yep. anymore. But the really serious streamers on their way up, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but it's six to eight hours, five times a week, right? A day. Yeah, exactly. A day, yeah. And, and, and they're not getting, like he said, those deals that used to come back in the day were inflated. So, you know, Kick will like, hey, we'll have you come over to... I'm sure when Kick had... Uh, Max Holloway go to that uh, platform. I'm sure Kick was like, hey, we're gonna give you a six-figure deal just to come and stream on our platform where those deals are nowhere to be found nowadays to where people are hoping one day they make that amount of money to stream in general. But it, it, it's it's very far and few in between. And the fact that Ninja still streams you know, four hours a day, even though he has a fuck ton of money in the bank. For me, I'm like, yeah, I, like now I'm more focused on building the YouTube content and the instant reaction and the Mighty Cast because I actually enjoy doing that stuff. Like when I'm uploading these videos and sending them to you, I'm going to play Diablo 4. If I was to stream Diablo 4 right now, I might get like maybe 200, maybe 150 viewers because nobody cares about the game, but I love the game as of right now. So just to hear his mindset, talk about his ego and to see what he's working on with his ninja podcast and nutcase and all that stuff and he's still grinding just because he wants to is it's kind of inspirational yeah we got to get you versus max some kind of stream on some game find find the right fit find the right platform because i i, I want to see who the bmf is of the video game world not not that <laughs> not that may world man it's so hard like i don't like the games like i don't play the same games that he does he plays valorant or i think he's playing what's the game he was playing last time apex legends he's playing that i don't play that game i'm usually a street fighter six guy and i don't think he plays street fighter six when you play street fighter last time i beat his ass and when i played the game he played more he beat my ass so it was kind of like <laughs> even it's it's very hard to see who's a better gamer unless they both play the same game and have the same it's like me versus uh What's the gentleman's name? Kenny Omega. Like when I played him, he we played the same game and he has way more hours than I I do in Street Fighter Six. And so he had a more of an understanding of how the game worked in the footsies and frame data and all that shit. Where now if we played, now that I understand frame data, now it would be an even playing field because everybody will like all the like the pros are like, oh, DJ doesn't understand frame data. Like his offense is way better than Kenny Omega and Mega, but he understands the frame data so dj's always going to be he can't win it's gonna be a lot harder for him to win so but we'll see we'll see we'll have max Holloway back on because he's getting ready to fight here potentially depending on when we drop this so we'll see but all in all i think it was a great podcast with ninja i i truly enjoyed it i always love talking to my gamers man and i know the fans out there who know me for my mixed martial arts i love talking to people who also share the same passion as me i mean you look at the asthma gold mighty cast that thing blew nate diaz podcast out the water because yeah. it's such a massive community yeah not and not to say not this. to date this but asmund gold as of recording this uh, i don't know when we're going to drop the ninja pod but as of recording this asmund is i believe a top three most watched mighty cast of all time so that's yeah. that's crazy i mean i would uh thank you to i want to give it to our fans being there supporting yep. us all the way because yep. i i was i thought oh that's we're going from, I think it was back-to-back -back weeks, right? Nate Diaz. As a yep. It could not have yep. been more polar opposites, but to see that audience, you guys you guys came, you supported the pod, so I, I thought that was really cool to see. And I always say this, gaming is way bigger than mixed martial arts. It, it, it just is, because in the gaming community, when they had Dota 2 going on, during the Olympics, the USA Olympics, or America Olympics, whatever you want to call it, Gaming had way more viewership than the Olympics at the same time. And the reason why I love gaming more than mixed martial arts is because if you game your whole life like I have, you can have an amazing conversation with somebody. But if you have another person who likes mixed martial arts, who trains mixed martial arts, like me, Michael, me and him, we can't talk about a triangle choke because he doesn't know what a triangle, I mean, he knows what a triangle choke is, but he doesn't know how it's put on there. So we are still passionate about mixed martial arts, but I can have a longer, I could probably have a longer conversation with Ninja, even though I never hung out with Ninja because we play Legend of the Gaia and we both have the same you know, love for the game, then when me and Michael, it would be a very hard to stretch out a conversation and talk about mixed martial arts. That's how I feel. So shout out to the fans for coming to support. And if you guys enjoyed this Mighty Cast, make sure you guys check out the new Mighty Season 1. Got the Mighty shirt on right now. Michael Wansover is wearing the Void and also the Mighty Cap hat. So go over to shopmighty.com. 
or check the link in the description. It will be there as well. Make sure you go get season one. Season two is down the line. I am already visioning season two. Boys, seasonal drop. Get your new swag, baby. And if you enjoyed this episode of the Mighty Recap, make sure you like, subscribe. Also, hit the bell to know go live and leave a comment, please. I am your host, Demetrius Johnson. That is my co-host, Michael Wanzover. We will see you beautiful people at the next Mighty Cast.